Today, I am going to super generalize the differences between a cracking dewaxing catalyst and an isomerization dewaxing catalyst. Now, if you talk to somebody in R&D, somebody with a PhD, I don't have one of those. There's a lot of factors to take into consideration and every catalyst has a different selectivity, a different activity, and there's variance between these catalysts on the market. However, I like simple comparisons, so I'm going to super generalize the difference between cracking and isom dewaxing catalyst. Uh, so in my experience, for to main, to get the same cold flow improvement, the same cloud point improvement or pore point improvement across your reactor, um, cracking catalysts are in general more active than isom dewaxing catalysts. So with a cracking catalyst, you don't need as much. You have more space for your hydro treating catalyst if you're in one vessel, like one reactor, um, or you don't need as high of operating temperatures. On the flip side, ISOM catalysts I found take up more room, more space um, in the reactor or require hotter operating temperatures to target the same cloud point improvement. Diesel yield is a big one, and diesel yield for isomerization dewaxing is better than cracking dewaxing. So you're with an isom dewaxing catalyst, you're going to have less naphtha make and less off-gas make. Um, and then hydrogen consumption is higher for isom dewaxing versus cracking dewaxing. In general, very generally speaking. So when you're evaluating different types of catalysts, isom versus uh, cracking, you have to take into consideration how much space you have in your reactor and balance that with your hydro treating um, cycle length, uh, your hydrogen availability within the unit, and also your downstream NASA and off gas make um, handling capabilities in your, off, your downstream equipment. I hope that helps simplify this. This took me like a few years to even figure out and wrap my head around it. So I hope that it helps. Have a great day.